Good evening, everybody. How are you today? Buenas noches, ¿cómo está? Hello, Hello Carlos Escobar. Hello, Julio Cesar. It's good to have you here, my dears. Thank you for coming and coming early tonight. So today we are going to continue with the section number three. So today we are going to conclude uh, section three and maybe start section four. Okay. okay. And okay. we are going to work with the uh, midterm exam. We are going to look for it and we are going to discuss some difficulties that maybe you have had with some of the exercises. So um, in order to start, I want to, to share with you the platform. So in the platform, uh, we have this. Right, I would like that you can confirm if you can watch the platform. Yes, yeah, okay, perfect. In this case, it says a, li a listening exercise will be uh, played in order to participants to develop these skills and learn to listen for details. So, I'm going because we have a little bit uh, of time, I'm going to try to play the, the audio for you to listen and then we will go to discuss. Uh, the questions, right? So, uh, let me stop sharing and let me let me open this and then let me share. But let me see if I can allow. I want to share the audio also. So you just will see the, the, the icon, right? But the intention is that you can hear. So I'm going to play the audio and I want you to listen, please. So let me adequate my volume. Okay, I think that's enough. So listen to Rex and Hannah order in a restaurant. What did each of them order? Fill in their check. Uh, can you listen? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. excellent. Okay, let's continue. Hi, may I take your order? Yes, I'll have a cup of coffee. Cream and sugar? Oh, yes, please. And you? I'd like a chicken sandwich, and I'll have some chips. Oh, you call them French fries here. <laughs> right. I'll have some French fries, please. All right. One coffee with cream and sugar and a chicken sandwich with French fries. Uh, anything else? Yes. I'd like an iced tea, please. One iced tea. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. What kind of desserts do you have? Well, we have pie, cake, ice cream, chocolate mousse. Ooh. What kind of pie do you have? I think today we have apple, cherry, lemon. Hmm. I think I'll have a piece of apple pie with my coffee. How about you, Hannah? Oh, maybe I'll have a piece later. Or I'll have some of yours. <laughs> then it's one coffee, one apple pie, one chicken sandwich, an order of french fries, and an iced tea, right? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Okay, excellent. Listen so, to Rex and Hannah ordering. I'm going to stop sharing this. And then uh, we will go back to the exercises in order that we can see what they are talking about. First, I want you to uh, say welcome to Elizabeth. And uh, I just want to say that we are uh, completing the section number three, right? And then we will go to the midterm exam. Okay, uh, in this case, I want you to notice that the two, the, the, the two persons come from maybe from UK because the lady says uh, that she wants some, some chips, right? And later she, she says, ah, oh, you call them French fries here. So maybe they are from uh, the UK or from Australia and they are in the United States and they are talking about... Uh, chips but they re she realized that in that uh, place they call them french fries so uh, according to the conversation according to what we listen right so let me show you 
Uh, the idea is that you can develop your listening skill and that you pay attention to details, right? So what I did is to what I did is to download uh, the audio, play it, and listen. So you can do the same, listen and listen again in order that you can do like three things. First, you train your ear uh, to the speaking because they are native speakers. So you will be uh, learning how to understand native speakers if you uh, listen uh, several times the same audio. Later, you can pronounce the words that you are not sure of the pronunciation, so you will uh, get confidence on how to pronounce those words. And finally, you will answer the exercise. In this case, it says, listen up to Rex and Hannah in order, um, order in a restaurant. What did they order? Click on the right, uh, click on the right choice, right? Uh, so in the first one says, Rex order. So you have to choose uh, an option. Uh, he ordered coffee with cream and sugar and a piece of apple pie. In this case, I want to refer to the word desert and dessert, right? Sometimes we get confused because uh, they, are, they sound similar and they are written in a very similar way. When you say um, desert, you're saying desierto, ¿verdad? But when you say dessert, con la, la, la fuerza de voz al final, dessert, you are talking about postre, ¿verdad? A postre. So, eh, a pie, an apple pie is a kind of dessert. So, Hannah's order is a chicken sandwich with french fries, ice, and iced tea. Okay, uh, now, eh, that was the last um, exercise. Now we are going to check the... Eh, the midterm exam, right? The idea of the midterm exam is that you can do uh, the same. We have a listening section, right? So let me go. Then you have to put the, the orders in the correct uh, order in order that they can make sense. Then you have um, a circle the correct word exercise. I will go uh, faster, but later we can go together solving. Then you have Let's see, the match problem with the advice, that's another section. And find in the F is complete the conversation with bottle, jar, pack, or two. And finally, you have to read an article, right? And that's it, the, the midterm exam. So what we are going to do now is to listen the first exercise we have with, uh, for you to check the correct information. So I'm going to stop sharing this and let me go to look for my, for the audio that I have for you. So just wait a minute for me, please. Uh, Cause uh, I have it, I'm supposed to have it ready, but it seems that I need to look again for it. So let me check. Okay. Uh, Oops, excuse me. Excuse me, this is not the one. Yeah. Let me, wait a minute for me. I'm sorry that this is taking a little bit more time. So let me share again. Ok, wait, wait a minute for me because I need to close. Vamos a cerrar las que tengo abiertas porque no me está dejando. Quiero que escuchen la correcta, pero por alguna razón no me está dejando. Vamos a ver. So, let me share now. Check the correct information. One. Hello. Hi, Wes. This is Laura. Oh. Hi.
I think this is not the one, my dears. Creo que no es este, chicos. No sé por qué no me ha... Ok, bye. voy a deshabilitar el compartir pantallas todas. Y vamos a volver a cargar el archivo. Vamos a ver. Yes, we are in the midterm exam. Deberíamos estar ya en el examen de medio periodo. Entonces, necesito abrir. Ok. Ok, let's see. There we go. Vamos a ver si ahora sí lo podemos escuchar todo. Creo que sí, ahora estamos en el audio correcto. Check the correct information. One. Hello. Hi, Wes. This is Laura. Oh, hi, Laura. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Listen, would you like to come to a beach party on Saturday? Amy and Terry are going to be there. Amy and Terry? Great! Uh, what time on Saturday? Well, we want to start around six in the evening. Oh, no. I start work at six. I have a part-time job in a restaurant. Oh, that's too bad, Wes. Well, maybe another time. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks for thinking of me. Bye. Bye. Two. Hi, this is Rita. Hey, Rita. This is Charlie. How are things? Not bad. How are you doing, Charlie? Fine. Say, would you like to come to a dance performance this weekend? I'd love to, but I'm pretty busy this weekend. I have to study for a test on Monday morning. Hmm. Are you going to study all weekend? Well, no. I'm going to a basketball game on Saturday night with Lucinda. But I really have to keep some time on the weekend for studying. How about tomorrow evening? The tickets are half price midweek. That's a good idea. Let's do it. Great. We can meet outside the Odeon Theater at about 7.45. Excellent. See you there. Bye. Bye. Okay, Listen to it. two telephone calls. Let us see. So I'm going to stop sharing and let me go back to the platform. Okay, according to this, Mm, but I am doubting that this is the audio. Fíjense, chicos, que creo que no era ese el audio. No me volvió a agarrar el audio. Bueno, miren, la idea es que en el audio que ustedes tienen en la plataforma, you have to listen to the conversation, eh, and then you have to answer, right? The first question says, eh, information one, the mm -hmm. woman visited Hokkaido for the first time. That's not the right answer, right? The right answer is, uh, the number the number two that said the beach in, Hok in Hokkaido are not crowded, right? The number two is the man had a great vacation in Paris last July. Number three, you shouldn't uh, miss some of the museums in Barcelona. Number four, Victoria is both safe and clean. Uh, so that's the part one. Eh, fíjense que no, no sé por qué razón no logré, um, quiero de nuevo, pero realmente por el tiempo creo que no vamos a poderlo hacer. Eh, but you can download it. Ustedes lo pueden, ustedes lo pueden eh, bajar. Básicamente lo que quería mostrarles es que lo que yo hice fue bajarlo. I download the audio. And then I can listen and listen and listen again until you get the answers because this, this exercise of the platform of the midterm exam is an audio that you have to download and that you have to listen, right? Uh, the second part, in the second, pa second part, we are evaluating the sentence structure. In the sentence structure, we are uh, basically evaluating the first class we have that is um adjectives uh, and uh, adverbs right so uh, in this case is 
adverbs before adjectives. If you remember in that class we learned, we learned that in order to give more emphasis to an adjective, you have, you need, you don't need, but sometimes you, you put an adverb here. For example, in this case, the adverb is extremely, and then the adjective is interesting. So when you have a sentence like this, right? Um, Peru, country, interesting, interesting is extremely, you know that you're talking about adverbs before adjectives, right? So, um, no pueden ver las imágenes. Vamos a ver. Ahora sí, se ve un poquito mejor. Yes. yes okay, teacher. okay, perfect. Uh, okay, Peru is an extremely interesting country. That's the, the correct order of that sentence because you have, the, Peru is an extremely interesting country. You can write it that way. Uh, Peru is extremely interesting country. All of them initial capitals, you can do it that way and it's correct. You can write it um, uh, initials, it's okay, right? All of them are okay as, as, as long as you write first the adverb and then the adjective. Peru is an extremely interesting count, right? So this, the number three, uh, me too for e Taipei expensive. Mm -hmm. And then, I look for the for the sentences and the best that matches is Taipei is too expensive. Again, too is an adverb that modifies the adjective expensive. So what I want to say that it's, I know it's expensive, but for me, it's too expensive. So it means that I cannot visit Taipei because I don't have enough money to pay um, how to get uh, how to get a hotel, transportation, food, so maybe. Uh, for other people, it's expensive, but for me, it's especially too expensive. So I'm giving more emphasis to the adjective expensive, and then I add the adverb too, okay? So again, uh, you can write the way you want, right? All of them are possible answers, but you have to make sure that you write uh, normally we write Taipei with a capital letter because it's the name of a place. And normally we write all of them uh, small letters, right? Uh, sometimes you can add a dot at the end. Okay, circle the correct word. Uh, in this circle the correct word, a word I mean, you have uh, to look for the right uh, answers, for example. New York is a very, it's very excite, exciting, but it is. In this case, if you remember, we study um, the conjunctions. And uh, can someone remember wh what were the conjunctions we study? Alguien puede mencionar las conjunciones que estudiamos? Mm -hmm. Y que me puedan contar, teacher, esa era tal, pero y sirve para tal cosa. Porque mi objetivo con desarrollar el examen de alguna manera no es que vean las respuestas, sino que recordemos. It's a refreshment of the topics and that you are, uh, you make sure that you remember the topic, that you remember the way to do it, and you will do it, of course, right in the exam. Okay, remember that uh, the conjunction, uh, we have and, we have but, and in this case, we said that and is used to add more things, right? La conjunción and es y, y nos servía para agregar eh, elementos a una lista, ¿verdad? Okay. The, the conjunction but, la conjunción but, it's to contrast to, to uh, yes, an, an opposite idea in, in uh, an opposite idea in the sentence, right? In, in, in here it says, New York City is very exciting. So that's an idea, uh, right? Then you have a comma, that means that there's a separation and then it said, but it is stressful, right? Eh, es una ciudad excitante, ¿verdad? Pero es eh. estresante, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí, sí, es excitante, ¿verdad? Puede ser bonita, pero es estresante. Entonces, por, es stressful, 
is the adjective that most, uh, com that complete best the opposite idea, right? It, can, it, it is not safe, it is not boring, it's stressful, okay? Lisbon, Lisbon is an interesting city and it is, look, in here I'm using and, so it means mm. that I'm describing mm. Lisbon and I'm providing more information about that city. So I said Lisbon is an interesting city and it's beautiful. Um, I cannot say it's noisy because if I'm, I say I say it's noisy, it's like opposite, and I'm using the conjunction and. So it's a similar, right? A similar idea that I have to say. Okay. Look here, Tokyo. Tokyo is a safe city. Start when I finish one idea. It's Tokyo is a safe a safe city. It's crowded though. Though it's uh, like however, right? Similar to but, right? Tokyo es una ciudad eh, segura. Eh, sin embargo, ¿verdad? Eh, es crowded, sobrepoblada, ¿verdad? O, o muy eh, saturada de personas. Es, eh, sobrepoblada sería la mejor, el mejor sign on it eh, in Spanish. Uh, look here, it, though it's similar to however, right? It's like a synonym. Um, my hometown, it's pretty boring. Pretty boring, pretty, un poquito, verdad? Aburrida, un poquito aburrida, pretty boring. Uh, it's very, however, sin embargo, verdad? Uh, es, it's relaxing, relaxing, right? Uh, so the next. Okay, that's it. In, the, in this exercise, uh, that's it. So then we go to complete the sentences with sound, with should, shouldn't, or can't. If you remember, uh, in this uh, module, we have been studying the modal auxiliaries. And we have learned that the modal auxiliaries are called that way because they are not verbs as a whole, because you cannot conjugate them uh, in all the tenses. So that's why uh, they help, they become like uh, helping verbs. And we have some that can give you advice like should, shouldn't, and um, ought to um, also. But we have others that express ability like can, right? Can. Uh, in this case, uh, they are asking for you to talk about should, shouldn't, or can't. Uh, in this case, I just want to mention that when you use can, you uh, need to be sure that when you say can, you have to open your mouth, can, like if you're smiling. And when you say the negative, you say can't. Mm, it, you uh, join your, your teeth and you feel like strength in your stomach. Can't, can't. And you need to pronounce it very well because if you don't say can't, if you don't say the t, t at the end, people can understand that you are saying can instead. So when you're going to say a negative, you say cannot, if you want to use the full form. But if you want to do the contraction, you have to do it well and you say can't. Okay, this city can be dangerous at night you shouldn't stay too late. So this is an advice because the first idea says this city can be dangerous at night, right? So I'm suggesting you that you shouldn't stay out too late, right? Why? Because this city can be dangerous at night. Uh, so uh, next, you Travel by subway late night. There are no trains after midnight. Okay, look, so what's the difference between the first and the second one? In the first is an advice because it, it says, can be dangerous, puede ser peligrosa. It doesn't mean that necessarily something needs to happen to you, but the suggestion is you shouldn't stay up too late, right? But look this, in this it says, there are no trains after midnight. So they are saying a fact. 
So if there are no trains after midnight, it means that you can't, you can't travel by subway late at night, right? It's a fact, it's true that there are no trains after midnight. So there's not a suggestion, is that you cannot do it, right? Okay, look the third. In Hong Kong, the weather is best in the fall. You should go there then. So it's an advice, right? Because I'm saying that the weather in Hong Kong is best in the fall. So I'm recommending you, I'm suggesting you to go there by then, right? Because the weather is best in that season. Uh, letter E, match the problem with the advice. Okay, in this case, uh, what we are studying is health problem problems. If you remember, we studied a list of vocabulary for different uh, physical problems, right, uh, or diseases, and we even practice how to answer and how to ask. For example, how do you feel today? I feel sick. I feel terrible. Even uh, I, I taught you some slangs or some uh, common uh, words that people say, for example, I feel dog, I feel sick as a dog, right? But the normal uh, question is, how do you feel today? I don't feel well. I feel sick. Um, I'm not uh, so well, right? Uh, or you can answer directly, I have a fever, I have a cough, I have a headache, I have a backache, I have a toothache, right? I have, a, I have an earache and so on. We can describe the problem we have. But in this case, the person says that the problem is a fever, right? So what you should recommend for a person that has a fever? Take some aspirin because see a dentist? No, it doesn't help. Use a heating pad? No, because he has a fever, so it's not possible. Maybe a cold pad, pad but not a heat, a heating pad, right? And the second problem is a sunburn. It means that I went out and I, did, I didn't um, wear any uh, block, a sunblock, so it means that I have some damages on my skin, so I have a sunburn maybe on my face, maybe on my uh, arms. And what I should recommend? Use a heating pad? No. See a dentist? No. Take some aspirin? Maybe, but not necessarily. So try this lotion because what they need to do is to try to uh, recover the damaged skin. So you have to say, why don't you try this lotion, right? And remember that in this section, we learn uh, how to say, why don't you try, or you should try, right, this lotion. Sore muscles, okay, sore muscles. In this case, yes, you may use a heating pad because you, you are in pain of your muscles. So when, you, when you're in pain of your muscle, you need to do some movements, some exercises, and maybe, uh, sometimes you need a massage, right, with a cream, uh, with a hot cream, and maybe you need to use a heating pad. Um, number four, a toothache. What I should recommend to a person that is feeling uh, bad because have, uh, he, or he or she has a toothache? Well, see a dentist, right? Maybe to take some aspirin, but it, it will not solve the problem. The best way to solve the problem is to visit a dentist or to see a dentist or to go to the dentist. Remember that we can use three verbs. To go to the dentist, to see a dentist, or to visit dentist office, right? Remember that in English, uh, we don't say necessarily clinic. We say sometimes doctor's office, dentist office. So you need to get used with that vocabulary. And in the letter F, uh, we have to complete the conversation with a bottle, jar, pack, or tube, right? So those are like the presentations of the medicine. And uh, 
Let me see. Someone is, is writing to me. I'm sorry, I just will answer. Okay, let me see. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, complete the conversations with bottle, jar, pack, or tube. So those are the presentations of the medicine, right? Uh, the, the customer says, uh, what do you have for a cold? Uh, the pharmacy says, take this, okay? Take this bottle of vitamin C. Take one every day. Remember that in this class, what we learn is the difference between the, the verb take and the verb drink. Yeah, for example, this is drink. So let's imagine that I have a pill. I take the pill, I put it on my, in my mouth, and then I'm going to swallow. So to swallow the pill I have here, I need to drink some water, right? but it's different. I take the pill and I drink the water. So we need to be clear that there are two verbs different. And whenever you take, and whenever you talk about a medicine, a pill or, or something that you are going to swallow is take. And the liquid is drink. Okay, every day. Every day is a frequency adverb, right? That means the, the frequency, how often you are going to, to take that pill. Uh, in this case, uh, we are talking about a bottle. Uh, the second one, the customer says, can I have something for, for dry skin? So look, we have two ways of asking for a medicine. The first one is, what do you have? What do you have for a call? In this case, you can say, what do you have for dry skin, right? But the other way is to say, can I, have, can I have something for dry skin? Or you can say, can I have something for a cold? It depends on the way you approach and you ask for help. The pharmacy says, I suggest, let's see. I suggest uh, this of hand cream. In this case, is hard, hard of hand cream, right? Uh, apply some every morning, right? So that's the like the medication. Apply some every morning. Okay. In the next, the customer says, "May I have something for for a toothache?" Look, it's another way to ask, but in this case, I'm using may I, may I. So if we compare uh, the first, what do you have for, can I have, this is most, more polite. May I have, may I have is more polite than the, than the other two. May I have something for a toothache? And the pharmacy says, of course, try this, two of a special tooth. Based. In this case, the presentation is a tube, right? And uh, you say try. Instead of take, you say try. Because uh, try, it means on your skin. You don't have to swallow. You only have to try on your skin. Okay, uh, number four. The customer says, could I get, could I get something for a sore throat? And the pharmacist says, Sure, here's a pack of cough drops. It's a pack because it has like, maybe it can have a 10 or 12 cough drops. So there's a pack, right? The presentation is a pack. They really work. So additionally, he provides like a recommendation and he says they really work. So in this case, if I compare, May I have with could I get? Uh, uh, may I have continues being the more polite, but could I get is also very formal way to ask for something. Um, okay, here. In the letter G, 
the, the challenge is that you need to read an article and uh, you need to find four things uh, people suggested uh, let's see suggested oops sorry i moved okay uh, the writer should do so i'm providing uh, some suggestions to the writer and we're saying what he should do so um you need to to look for those four advices or recommendations. So let me see if I have, but I think that I don't have. So let's try to read it here. I'm going to try to read it. Isn't amazing? You have a health, a health problem and everyone gives you different advice. For several months, I felt tired all the time. Some people suggested I slept longer but others say I was sleeping too much. One friend told me I was working too hard and, he, and she said it's important to relax. Another friend suggested that it's helpful to get a lot of fresh air. His advice was that I should go for a long walk every day after work. Uh, after work. One coworker told me, you are not tired, just lazy. Even different doctors give me the give give you different advice for the same problem. I visited one doctor and she gave me some vitamin C. It didn't work. So I went to another doctor and he simply suggested I take a vacation. That didn't work either. Remember either or either. A third doctor told me uh, to pick up some medicine from the drugstore. I felt even more tired. Finally, I, I went to a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. He gave me some medicine, medicinal plants. He advised me to cook them in water and then drink the herbal mixture. I wore, it worked. Now I'm never tired, tired, but I can't sleep at night. Who should I asked for advice this time, imagine. He went, he listened first to friends, co-workers, uh, like three or four doctors. And finally he went to the Chinese traditional medicine and he uh, got one, the solution for one of the problems, but now he's having a problem that um, he cannot sleep at night, right? So he's asking, what, sh uh, what should I do now? Or who could I ask help, right? What advice you, you, you should ask, uh, give him, right? Uh, ask someone for advice? No, because he already went and many people provide advice, but it didn't work. Never sleep at night? No, that's the problem he's having. So you shouldn't recommend that. See a doctor? Mm, come on, he already see like three or four doctors and it didn't work. Take some aspirin? Mm, no, the aspirin is not necessarily for uh, sleeping problems, right? Walk before work? Mm, no, maybe he's going to be tired to go to work. And the problem is not at work, the problem is at night. Work longer hours? No, he's going to be even more tired. So maybe some of the of the suggestions that people gave him is go on vacation, sleep less, sleep more, try some medicinal plants. So those are the four recommendations that you can get from the advices he received, right? So that's it. That's it. That's the final exam. So I would like to listen to you. If you have questions, what do you think about the exam? And if you have tried to solve. Me gustaría ahora escucharlos a ustedes. Eh, ¿Qué piensan, verdad? El examen. Vimos que es una eh, forma de practicar, verdad? Eh, that you need to, um, it, the last part is a reading for comprehension, reading. Uh, in a way that you can capture the main ideas of the suggestions people is giving to the to the to a friend. We can imagine that uh, is a friend, right? So, um, what do you think about it? 
of course you have to go to the platform you need to uh, you can expand the article it can you uh, even you can download it and you i what i recommend you to do is to look for the new words right and uh, you will find many maybe you will find many new words and then you can have a complete understanding of of the article the idea as i said before is not just answering the exam right which is correct you have to do it but you need to to find a way to take advantage of all these material you have in a platform. So I would like to know uh, who has uh, been working already in the in the exam in the midterm exam. In Spanish, if you don't want to say in English. <laughs> okay. Si ustedes se fijan, hemos hecho un recorrido así bien rápido, ¿verdad? Eh, obviamente ustedes van a tener que ir, van a tener que revisarlo. Eh, básicamente lo que hemos hecho es un análisis, ¿verdad? De todo el contenido que hemos visto hasta ahora eh, en las clases y ustedes se van a dar cuenta que todo está eh, en el examen, ¿verdad? Eh, hemos ido en cada sección, por eso fui sección por sección para que ustedes vean que en cada sección se está evaluando cada uno de los temas que hemos visto. ¿verdad? Hemos llegado justo hasta cerrar eh, la sección 3 con el midterm exam. Para la próxima semana, ¿verdad? O si el tiempo nos alcanza, si, si ustedes no tienen, digamos, eh, mayores eh, consultas esta noche, pod podemos empezar, podemos iniciar lo que sería la sección 4, ¿verdad? Al menos con la parte de vocabulario. Pero la idea era de que ustedes vieran eh, cómo hemos... Eh, trabajado, ¿verdad? Todos los temas que hemos visto y cómo esos temas se han aplicado en los Knowledge Check y en el Midterm Exam. And the critical point I have uh, to discuss tonight is uh, how much uh, you have advanced, right, in, in the platform. And if you have difficulties, remember that I am available during the weekend. You can chat uh, uh, to, to write in the WhatsApp group. And I can also give you advice uh, personally if you need, right? Entonces me gustaría saber cómo van, si han avanzado eh, y, y básicamente eh, qué tipo de apoyo estaríamos necesitando para que podamos avanzar. En mi caso, pues me cosa todavía un poquito como con el vocabulario y armar como la de conversation uh -huh. eh, pero a veces por entre el trabajo y todo eso me costaba avanzar en la plataforma pero ya me programé para este viernes sábado y domingo y la verdad es que los temas para manejarlos hay que estudiar sí. definitivamente Y el vocabulario, pues, también son propósitos personales que uno tiene que irse como eh, poniendo para aprender cada día más. Y la verdad es que usted lo ha, nos ha ayudado bastante. El método es súper bueno para, nos ayuda porque nos da la, eh, la ayuda con la plataforma. A veces... Uno se entretiene en las respuestas porque prueba una, prueba otra. Y, pero la idea sí es muy buena en el sentido de que eh, nos está dando la respuesta, pero a la vez nos obliga también a que tenemos que revisar nuestro, todo lo, lo visto, ¿verdad? Sí, eh, como les digo, no es solo el hecho de tener la respuesta, sino que más bien el dar la respuesta es para discutirla. ¿Verdad? Eh, e incluso aquí por razones de tiempo con otros grupos lo que yo he hecho es que lo hemos llevado, hemos ido directamente a la plataforma porque aquí lo que yo he traído para avanzar con el tiempo es una presentación, pero con otros grupos hemos ido a la plataforma y el grupo ha ido resolviendo, ¿verdad? Sin embargo aquí lo que hemos hecho es un, un análisis de, de por qué la respuesta, ¿verdad? Es esa. Eh, también hemos ido haciendo análisis de estructura. ¿Verdad? Eh, porque eh, cuando ustedes revisan, solo déjenme ir de regreso rapidito, eh, hay, hay respuestas que son bien tricky, ¿verdad? Que usted diría, eh, pero ¿por qué no es esa? Si yo creía que era esa. 
Y a veces tengo, tengo ese tipo de retroalimentación, ¿verdad? Teacher, ¿y por qué eh, me está dando error, verdad? Si yo creo que estoy en lo correcto y, y, y al final terminamos viendo de que sí, eh, no era, digamos, la, la mejor opción, ¿verdad? Eh, y, por ejemplo, a, hay casos donde me dicen, teacher, ¿pero por qué no es así? Y a veces es porque no han colocado an, por ejemplo, en una de las respuestas y la siguiente palabra comienza con con vocal, entonces me están escribiendo a Apple, por, por ejemplo. Entonces, eh, cositas, ¿verdad? Que ustedes necesitan identificar. Entonces, eh, de nuevo mi pregunta es si alguien ya terminó esta sección o si les hace falta. No yet, miss. No yet, ok. Uh, remember, if, if you need help, I will be available during the weekend so you can write to the chat. And, or you can write directly to me and I can help you to solve uh, any doubt you may have about that, right? Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, tell me. Uh, with the topic about the adverbs, um, the adverbs describe uh, to, the, to the adjective yes. or, It, or the verb. In this case, uh, the adverb normally describe a verb. That's the normal function of an adverb, right? But in that topic uh, of the platform, we are talking about adverbs that describe adjectives to give more emphasis to the adjective, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. It's an extra, we can say that this is an extra function that the adverb may have, right? Mm -hmm. But normally an adverb describes a verb, right? Okay, okay. But in this case, we are learning because you are a little bit advanced. Because in the first groups, uh, what we learn is that an adverb describes a verb. It's something that you mm -hmm. already know. But now you are going higher in grammar. So I, we need to teach you that, uh, that an adverb also can describe an adjective. And the, the idea of doing this is to give more emphasis to the adjective. For example, when I say it's too expensive, It means that impossible for me to buy it, right? <laughs> Or when I say I am very tired, it means that I am really, really tired and I don't want to do anything else. I just want to fall asleep, right? <laughs> It's like to give more emphasis to the adjective, right? Okay. Um, an example with the, with the verb. Mm -hmm. An example, excuse me? Uh -huh. uh, could you give me a, an example with the verb? Okay, um, I can say, my daughter can dance um, gracefully, or we can say, my, let's see, one easy, gracefully, graciosamente. I can say, my, my girl can dance uh, gracefully. In this case, dance gracefully, It's mm -hmm. dance is the, uh, the verb and gracefully the adverb. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see the other. Um, my, easy. My friend uh, Emperatriz is, uh, is friendly. Is the verb friendly. Uh, let's see the other one. Um, lately. Um, the train arrived lately, right? Uh, let's see other. Arrived lately. Um, I I told uh, I tell I tell politely. Lo digo eh, diplomáticamente. I tell politely. I say politely or I greet politely. Oh, oh, in this case, uh, uh, sorry, miss. <laughs> Don't worry, you just, just uh, tell me and, and we can continue okay. looking for more examples. Okay. In the example with the verb, the adverb, um, it's going, it, it will be after of the verb. In no. when the adverb, no. Normally, the adverb goes at the end. Normally, the adverb, when, when you use uh, um, 
the normal function of an adverb, they go at the end when they, when they end in E, right? So let me, vamos a ver, let me share. Okay. Eh, no se preocupen, vamos a buscar ahorita. Just give me one second. Please, me. Thank you. Don't worry. This time is for you. And if this topic has been like the most difficult, I can explain it again. So I open it and then let me, my dears, okay? I'm looking just for, Hello, my dears. I'm just trying to show you my files. Eh, estoy tratando de compartirles mis files, pero creo que no lo pueden ver, fíjense. Aquí está, finalmente. Aquí está, todavía tenemos unos minutos para verlo. Eh, can you watch my screen? ¿Lo pueden ver ahora? Yes. Ok, yes, let's see. Teacher. Ok, aquí está. Eh, normally, eh, the position of the adverb, I would like that you can see here. You can have some adverbs that go in the front position, and then you can have some adverbs that go in the mid position, and at the end, right? For example, here you can say, sometimes I see him at the supermarket, right? In this case, it goes at the beginning, and uh, you have adverbs like sometimes, suddenly, tomorrow, next to, perhaps. You have others that can go uh, at the beginning or can go in the mid position. For example, always. He always has sandwiches. Always is modifying the verb has, right? Uh, he slowly uh, backed, in this case, slowly is modifying backed. We've already eaten, in this case, already is modifying the verb eaten, right? We're obviously going, obviously is modifying the word going, right? And then hardly believe, in this case, the adverb hardly is modifying believe. But we have some others that can go at the end, normally the ones that end with Lee. He visits me occasionally. So, uh, when he visits me, occasionally, right? So occasionally is modifying the verb visit, right? Because it describes how he visits me. In this case, the horse wished its tail angrily. How the, word, the horse wished its tail? Angrily. So I'm describing the, uh, the adverb is describing or modifying the action of the verb, right? And you can have some adverbs like tomorrow. Journalists will be able to preview the exhibition tomorrow. When? Tomorrow. Bring the boxes here. Where I, do I bring the boxes? Here, right? So you can have uh, different uh, positions, front position, mid position, and end position, right? Uh, so it takes a little time. Uh, to learn the difference and to learn which are adverbs, but basically you have to learn that we have a frequency adverbs, right? That's why I like this chart, because you can have frequency adverbs that say um, how often, right? When they answer how often, they are frequency adverbs, right? Adverbs of quantity, when they answer how much, Adverbs of a place, when they ask where. Adverbs of time, when they ask when. And adverbs of manner, when they ask how, right? So uh, it will depend, and it will depend on the sentence structure, the position of the adverb. So I don't know if it, 
uh, it's a little bit clearer? Yes, Miss. It's more clear. Okay. For me, it's, it's, more, it's more clear. Thank you. Excellent, Miss. excellent. You're welcome. I would like to know if you have more questions. Me gustaría saber si tienen más preguntas. Vamos a dejar de compartir. Tenemos más preguntas, chicos, sin pena, ¿verdad? Recuerden que este es un espacio de, de análisis de lo que hemos hecho hasta ahora. Eh, y me gustaría eh, saber si han tenido dificultades eh, con la sure. plataforma. Sí, adelante. Uh, I want to share with you uh, some troubles uh -huh. uh, that have in the system. Ok, I'm going to speak in Spanish. Yes, don't worry. Este, hay varios problemitas. No sé si ya los compañeros, bueno, ya se habrán dado cuenta. Eh, por ejemplo, la parte esta del examen, la, creo que es la última o antepenúltima, donde tenemos que leer un, un parrafito. Este que tengo acá. No sé si lo están viendo. Too much advice. Creo que sí. Tenemos que leerlo y, y contestar... Según lo que dice ahí. Uh -huh. Eso eh, es. Va, ya, ya tuve la oportunidad de hacerlo. Y por si no lo han hecho algunos de ustedes, pues quiero compartirlo. Por, por si no han llegado ahí, este, que en la última hay que seleccionar solo una opción. Nos, nos aparecen varias. Nos aparecen como 10 opciones para seleccionar obviamente 4 o 3. Uh -huh. 4, 4 me permitió a mí. Perdón ah. que lo interrumpa. Ahí está. Uh -huh. no, no, no tenga pena, dice. Nos permite cuatro, pero solo tenemos que seleccionar una. Porque no nos deja seleccionar más. Entonces, ahí yo me quedé como que medio... ¿Y entonces qué hago? Va? Pero al seleccionar solamente una, en automático, el sistema ya no selecciona las otras. Creo que es un error del, 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 del sistema, pues, ¿verdad? Que mm. en los otros cursos anteriores también yo ya los he tenido, que a veces, por la, porque yo le estaba poniendo punto... Uh -huh no me daba correcta la oración. Pues. Sí, no es cierto. Eso, yo se lo estaba poniendo y, y, y bueno, entonces solamente quería compartirles eso, ¿verdad? Que encontré ese pequeño problemita ahí con el sistema y, y, y pues por si cuando lleguen ustedes, pues y por los que no han llegado, ¿verdad? No, no, no se vayan a sorprender ahí con eso, pues solamente hay que seleccionar una nomás y, y, y el automático le va a poner las otras que son correctas. Ok, perfecto. Solo quiero hacerle una pregunta. Eh... ¿Le contabilizó equivocado el ejercicio o se lo tomó como bueno? Eh, me lo tomó como bueno todo. Solamente agarré una y en automático, bueno, la, es, es que la fregada es que no me deja seleccionar más, sino que solamente ah. me deja seleccionar. Entonces a mí se me sigue raro porque son 10, 10 o más opciones. O sea, por lo menos tendría que ser unas 3 o 4 opciones, decía yo, ¿verdad? pero uh -huh. no me deja seleccionar más. Entonces al ver que solo una... Yo le di la opción de submit y automático me seleccionó las otras ya. Uh -huh, ok, está bien. Entonces, mire, eh, voy a reportar, voy a, voy a mandar este, este reporte, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Felizmente lo tenemos aquí en pantalla, no lo voy a perder de vista. Y voy a eh, mandarle el reporte a los compañeros, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Para que lo puedan revisar, porque sí, sin duda es un error de sistema. ¿Verdad? No, no les permite seleccionar los cuatro por alguna razón. ¿Verdad? Sí, ajá, no, 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 no los permite y, y a la vez yo pienso, pues, o sea, son, son, son errores del, del sistema que mejor hay que comentarlos y, y en vez de criticar, mejor abonar, ¿verdad? Para que, claro, claro. Que arregle, muy... Porque la verdad que todos estamos aprendiendo, yo les agradezco, les agradezco mucho a usted, teacher, a los otros teachers y pues al, al, al curso este, pues, de Insafor, que podemos tener la oportunidad de tener este curso gratis. Ok, excelente, ¿no? Y nosotros también muy agradecidos porque sí, como con esto de los sistemas, a veces uno, eh, como no es el programador, ¿verdad? No, no mira qué, qué errorcitos han quedado a la hora de correrlo. Entonces, eh, muy agradecida por porque me lo haya dicho y yo lo voy a reportar. Eh, sí. Si alguien más presenta el problema, pues también me dicen, ¿verdad? Y, y yo con mucho gusto también ah, sí. lo, voy a, lo voy a hacer saber. Ok, okay my dears. Eh, so, I would like to know if you have uh, questions about the midterm exam. So, the idea is to go on the different sections for you to see what we are evaluating. It's basically all the knowledge check we have already worked on. 
I'm sorry because in the listening part, I couldn't get the, the right audio, right? But you can download it. Eh, perdonen que, que en la primera parte, con tantos audios que he descargado, no logré eh, poner el que era el audio correcto, pero ustedes lo pueden descargar. Entonces, básicamente, lo que podemos retomar es que, de, de igual manera, como yo lo descargué en la compu, usted lo puede hacer y, pues, le puede quedar el audio para que usted lo pueda estar escuchando en el número de veces y, como les he dicho, practicar la pronunciación. No solo el oír, sino la pronunciación hasta que usted se oiga usted mismo que lo pronuncia igual que la persona que lo está diciendo, ¿verdad? Eh, ese es un poco el objetivo de los audios y que ustedes lo puedan descargar y pues responder eh, tranquilamente, ¿verdad? El, el ejercicio sin mucha eh, prisa. Eh, no sé si, si nos quedamos hasta acá, chicos, o si tienen preguntas. Eh, por el tiempo de ustedes, ¿verdad? Porque ya, ya se nos acabó el tiempo, ya no los quiero desvelar. Yo sé que estamos en jornada extra. Teacher, yo el fin de semana voy a trabajar la plataforma. Este, cualquier duda ahí voy a mandar algún mensajito posiblemente, tal vez si, si algo se me complica, pero pues yo siento, siento que la plataforma generalmente es, es accesible. Así que el fin de semana me toca trabajar. Ok, perfecto, excelente, eh, perfecto, entonces eh, yo quedo al, al pendiente de ustedes, ¿verdad? Para que nos podamos poner todos al día y que para el próximo lunes ya todos estemos caminando sobre el inicio de la sección 4, ¿verdad? Eh, y podamos ya eh, quedarnos pues más tranquilos ya desarrollando la sección 4 la próxima semana y la siguiente semana la sección 5 y el examen final. ¿Verdad? De nuevo, reiterarles que aunque fin de semana, yo quedo a disposición de ustedes. Ok, my dear, thank you for coming. I appreciate that and be safe and enjoy your weekend as much as you can. Ok? okay. Take care, be safe. Hope to see you on Monday. Bye bye, take care. The material is, uplo is uploaded, right? Ya tienen todo el material subido en el drive. Ok? Ok. Ok, bye. thanks. Take care. Okay.